use different things like that. Uh, there's a couple of people I'd like to quickly introduce. Uh, our camp director and assistant camp director had to run down to, to get some more food for the commissary really quick. They will be right back shortly as soon as I get here. I'll introduce them. I'd like to introduce you to my assistant. This is Chuck. Hi, Chuck. Hi, <laughs> Chuck. Chuck's the assistant program director and a commissioner here in Mapledale. Our head commissioner, J Dog. Another one of our commissioners is Willow. Willow. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mitch. Mitch. Yeah. Mitch. All right, we'll get into why these guys are who they are here shortly, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In the brown town kind of top row, one of those things says leaders guys. Mm -hmm. Let me go grab that. Okay. We're just going to go through a whole bunch of information. Uh, I know it's probably a lot of stuff we're going to cover here in the next little bit. Uh, try to make notes best you can. If you have or ever have any questions about camp, camp policies, the program, you can come talk to myself, any of the commissioners. We all know everything. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> humble, too. So humble. <laughs> Hopefully, all of you have brought a copy of the Leader's Guide that you got off the internet, uh, which has all of the information that we're going to talk about today. Now, if uh, if you don't have a copy of the schedule and you're not sure exactly what is going on, come talk to me and I'll see what I can do for you. I have this on my computer too. I might be able to make a couple of printouts for you. So, Okay. Let me find camp services. Uh, we have a lost and found at camp. If your boys lose anything, uh, a money card, a uh, scout shirt, pocket knives, you know, we lose everything here. Uh, the trading post is where the lost and found is. So have them search there first. Let your commissioner know. They will uh, pass the information on to the correct people. If you loot or find anything while you're wandering around through camp, because that does happen, you know, you'll find a wallet, you'll find a money card, uh, turn that into either your commissioner or take it down to the trading post and turn it into them. Um, and if you do that as quickly as possible, whoever's lost item that is, would greatly appreciate it. So, uh, But that's where the lost and found is. If you guys receive any mail this week while you're here at Camp Maple Dell, uh, we will deliver that to you at our next meeting, uh, whether it's Scoutmaster meeting, uh, Senior Patroller meeting, or at our next camp-wide activity. Uh, just letting you know, so if we do receive any mail, if you are expecting something like urgent, sometimes we'll have Scoutmasters who will uh, FedEx or UPS blew a box of patches or something like that. Just let us know so we can expect it uh, if the UPS truck is going to come up here so he doesn't stand around wondering what's going on, why am I at a Boy Scout camp? So, uh, Senior patrol leaders, how many of your scouts are going to be taking showers this week? All of them, right? <laughs> yes. one, of the, or one of the parts of the scout law is uh, scout is clean, right? So one of the things that we're going to do this week is we're going to push the cleanliness. We want to encourage your scouts to take showers throughout the week. Um, the shower houses are located at the pool. There are two different shower houses. One is, uh, how many of you did their swim check today? How many of you did swim checks? Okay. So you're probably already familiar. There is the adult shower house. That is the shower house that is not attached to the fence. There are two sides to that. There is a adult male side and there's an adult female side. Now, Scoutmasters, make sure you pass this on to all your other leaders. We do have girls in camp. So when you go up there to shower, and I know that I only tell you the story because it has happened. We had a Scoutmaster who went up to take a shower and all the shower stalls were full. He's like, ah, oh, there's no girls in camp. I'll just go over to the girls side. He goes into the girls side. Well, one of our female staff members went in there to take a shower and got a huge surprise. Uh, wasn't very good. Do not go into the female side, okay? We have about 13 girls on staff uh, that plan on using that. Uh, the youth shower house is the one that is attached to the fence right next to the swimming pool. Uh, senior patrol leaders, raise your hand. Okay, this is very important for you guys to pass on to your scouts. The youth shower house is for everybody that is 17 and under, okay? There are like 16 shower heads in there, or however many it is, there's a lot of them in there. Uh, we only have one gigantic water tank. The best time to take a shower if you want a warm shower is in the morning. 
because what happens is, is the first 10 scouts that go in there leave the nozzle open, they let all the hot water run out, then it takes the rest of the day to get the hot water going. So I would suggest showering in the morning. Can we get the names of those first 10? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And then the youth are not allowed in the adult shower house, okay? Scouts, pass that on to your, your, your uh, rest of your troop. Adults, we are not allowed in the youth shower house for any reason, okay? Youth protection guidelines. If you find something wrong with the shower houses, whether there's no toilet paper, whether there's no paper towels, just let our uh, aquatic staff know and they will take care of it for you. Uh, they're just right there at the swimming pool, so. Okay, we have a telephone. Huh? Adult, yeah. Yeah. This is Debbie right here. Raise your hand, Debbie. She's our aquatics director, so just let her know. Okay, we do have a pay telephone. It's located down in the parking lot by the checkout building. Uh, it's been acting kind of weird this summer, like every other summer here at camp, but uh, occasionally it goes out, so if it is out, we apologize. The phone company has been up a couple of times to try and figure out what's going on. It usually happens when it rains. We do have a 30% chance of rain today, just letting you know that. Uh, if you have an emergency and you need to make a phone call, there are phones in my office and the camp director's office. We can uh, let you guys do that. Cell phone reception. Occasionally you'll get it throughout camp too, so just letting you know. Uh, if we receive an emergency phone call from somebody, we will try to get that message to you as soon as possible. If it's just a regular message, we'll probably bring it to our next meeting and get pass it on to you guys. So, Okay, I'm going to let Chuck talk about the next part. Come on up, Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. Security, personal safety, and then camp calls. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. Okay, um, the first thing is, here at Maple Dell, we operate always using the buddy system. Okay, so senior patrol leaders, make sure you pass this on to your scouts. Okay, they always need to have their buddy with them. This is most important at the lake and the pool. Okay, when you go to the lake and the pool, you have to go in and you have to put your tags on the buddy board. Okay, when you put your tags on the buddy board, you line them up with your buddies. And this, the aquatic staff will do buddy checks to make sure that everybody's accounted for. Okay? But also, just when you're walking around camp, make sure you have a buddy with you, okay? in case anything happens. That way your buddy's there to help you out. Okay? So scouts, always walk around with a buddy. Tell all your boys that. Um, uh, with security, um, any time that people come up to visit, okay? visitors, um, new leaders coming up, other scouts coming up that haven't been here yet, everyone needs to check in with the medical office when they get here. The medical office is just right across the street here. Big white sign that says medical office. You just go up the stairs, you find Fawn, and they check in with her. Okay? Yes? Where do we get the buddy tags? The aquatic staff have that taken care of. Oh, okay. Okay? Um, uh, let's see, the next thing. Supervision in camp. Uh, Scoutmasters, um, I hope you all know about too deep leadership. We always have to have two adult leaders. One has to be at least 21. The other can be... 18, but it has to be over 18, so we have two adults in your camp um, at all times. Okay, this doesn't mean they're in your campsite at all times, but it means we have to have two adult leaders in camp, okay, for your troop. And then at nighttime, they both have to be there, okay? If you have a problem um, meeting that requirement at some point, come and talk to one of the commissioners, okay? I'm like, if you have a leader that can't be here one night for an emergency or some reason, um, you know, we can spend the night in the campsite to make that too deep leadership, okay? Um, but don't abuse that. Okay, if you have a leader that just doesn't want to come up, okay, the camp director has said in the past that if you need a second leader for more than a night, he'll start charging you for that because we have other staff responsibilities. Okay, so don't abuse that. If it's an emergency type thing, we can help you take care of it, but do your best to get someone up here as soon as possible because we have to have those two leaders here. Um, personal possessions. Okay, hopefully you guys didn't bring a lot of uh, valuable personal possessions with you. This is a Boy Scout camp, we're in the wilderness, there's no reason to have a lot of these things, okay? Um, but I'm sure some of you did. Now keep in mind that we are at a Boy Scout camp, but being so, we still have things stolen from tents every week, okay? So boys, if you brought your Discman, your, your Walkman, your MP3 players, stereos, whatever it is, whatever you brought with you, you know, a nice watch your dad gave you, whatever it is, Okay, you guys need to keep those things hidden and out of view. Because most often when they get stolen, it's that you left it on top of your sleeping bag, you left the flaps open and the windows open, someone walked by and said, oh, I need that more than he does, and they take it. Okay, so keep those things hidden. 
The other half, the flip side of the coin is you guys, as senior patrol leaders and scoutmasters too, you need to be watching your boys. Okay, if they suddenly have a bunch of stuff you don't think was theirs, um, you might want to confront them about it or tell the commissioners and we can talk to them about it. Okay, um, but also Camp Mapledale is not responsible for anything that gets stolen this week. Okay, so if it just happens to get taken, we're not responsible for that. Okay, um, another important thing about this is when you go to the lake in the pool, don't take extra things with you. Don't take your money with you. Don't take your wallets, your watches, your money cards, anything like that. Okay, that's the other place where stuff gets stolen most often is you bring your wallet and $20 down with you to the pool, you leave it in the shower house, when you go swimming you come back and it's gone. Okay, so when you go to the lake in the pool, just take the stuff you need to be in the aquatics areas. Just take your swimsuit and your towel and your sandals, whatever you have, okay? Just take that stuff and don't take all these extra things that might get stolen. Um, all right, moving on to camp policies. Um, we already talked about how new people that come in need to check in with the medical office. That's because everyone in camp, leaders and scouts, okay, even if you're just a leader that's visiting for a day or so, everyone in camp needs to be checked in with us and needs to have a medical form on record at the medical office. Okay? So even if your leader is just here for the day, he needs to have that medical form. Okay? It has to be a class two medical form signed by a doctor. Because most often the leaders that come up that have the heart attacks that Fawn has to deal with are the ones that are only here for a day. Okay, so even though they're only here for a day, they need to have that medical form on file. So when they get here, they need to have that and check in with Fawn. Um, vehicles in camp. Um, after our flag ceremony, which will be at 2.30 right over there, um, we'll talk about that in a second. After that flag ceremony, by about 3 o'clock, 3.30, you guys need to have all the vehicles out of your campsites and either in the lower parking lot down here below the, the lodges and uh, below the cabins or in the parking lot across the street. We can't have any vehicles in the campsites, okay? We'll lock this gate down here by the little checkout shed, and then from that point until Saturday morning, no personal vehicles in camp, okay? Only the camp maintenance vehicles. Um, so if you have leaders coming up partway through the week, okay, make sure you let them know they cannot drive their, their things up to the campsite, okay? Um, for the last couple weeks, uh, the commissioners, the four of us, well actually mostly J-Dog and I because we're the only ones that can drive camp trucks, we've spent all day long driving people's stuff up to their campsites. Okay? Um, we don't really have time to be doing that. If they have a lot of equipment, okay, we'll be happy to try to help out. They eat, but the most annoying thing is when we have a leader come and say he needs us to drive his stuff up to the campsite and he has a sleeping bag and a backpack. Okay? This is the Boy Scouts. One of the aims of Boy Scouts is fitness. Okay, we're in the outdoors. We don't want to be driving people up when they have like one thing that they can easily carry themselves. The, the easiest and most ex expedient way for him to get his stuff in the campsite is to go up to the campsite, find the boys, have the boys come down and help them carry the stuff up. Okay, because we'll, we'll be happy to help, but we can't always guarantee we can help at that moment. It might be a couple hours before we can drive his stuff up. Okay, so have him come and get the boys, find you, get the boys, and have them carry his stuff up to the campsite. Okay, help him out. Okay? Um, but we won't, we won't open that gate for any reason, so don't come and ask us to let you in with the vehicle. Okay? Um, it's, an, it's a BSA policy. We can't do it. Um, the garbage run. Okay? Every day um, at 7.30, the four commissioners, we do a garbage run. Okay? The 7.30 p.m. Okay? This is to help you guys get the garbage out of your campsite so you don't have a huge skunk and raccoon problem. Okay, we have a million skunks and a million raccoons in camp. If you leave your garbage in your camp, they're going to be there, they're going to tear it apart, and you're going to have a lot of mess to clean up the next morning. Okay? So every night at 7.30. Now, there's some rules with this. Number one, double bag everything. Senior patrol leaders, pass this on to your scouts. Because when they're doing KP, they're going to forget this. Okay? Double bag everything. Number two, you need to carry the bags to one of the dump sites. Do not drag the bags. Okay? What happens is, is scouts, they don't want to carry the bags because they're kind of heavy, so they drag them there, leave them in the dump site. We go to pick up the bag, and the bag comes, but the garbage stays because the whole bottom of the bag was ripped out. Okay? Um, so they need to carry them down there. Make sure you tell the boys that are on KP that as well. Yeah, question? Dump sites. The dump sites. I'm getting to that. Okay. Um, so you double bag, you need to carry the bags, 
The other big rule is no bodily wastes, fluids of that like that of any kind. It's a huge health and safety issue. You wouldn't think we'd have to say this, but for some reason every single week we get what we like to call a puke bag. Okay? Where a scout got sick, he vomited in the trash bag, and you guys just let us take care of it. Okay? Every week that happens. Um, we're just warning you now, if we get any puke bags, we'll stop doing the garbage run. Okay? If a boy vomits in a trash bag, it needs to be triple or quadruple bagged, several bags around it, and then it needs to be carried down to the dumpster by someone responsible, preferably one of the leaders. Okay? Carry it down to the dumpsters, which are just down in the road here. Okay, what? Yeah. He probably won't always feel up to it, but okay, down by the then it needs to be thrown in the dumpsters. Okay? The other we have had problems with bloody things in the trash bags. We've even had problems with urine and feces in the trash bags. Okay, those are completely unacceptable. It's a huge health and safety issue. Okay? So none of those things. Now, if you miss the garbage run, we come through at 7.30 and pick all the bags up. If you miss the garbage run, that those garbage bags need to be hauled down to the dumpsters by somebody in the troop. Okay, so senior patrol leaders, make sure you tell the guys that. If they don't get the bags out there in time, and we've already come through, those guys that were in charge of taking it down there need to take it down to these dumpsters down here. Okay, because otherwise, if they leave it there, the next morning that's going to be all over camp. Okay, because the raccoons will tear it up. Now, there are four dump sites. Okay, we pick up the garbage um, at the truck stop, the handicraft area. So those of you in Willow's area, um, that big metal pavilion we call the truck stop, it's where all the handicraft merit badges are. That's our first dump site. That's probably the closest one to you. Uh, my troops, up on the forks, our dump site is where the road forks just below Sioux, where all the blue kaibos are, right there, where the road forks. It's, you know, just where you fork to go up to your campsites. That's our second dump site. For Mitch's troops, um, our dump site is just in the horse pasture on the northeast corner um, kind of by the, not by the flagpoles, but sort of on that corner of the horse pasture. Okay, and the last one for J-Dog's troops, and, well, if you're, if you're like Mitch's and you're in Osage, Petit in Pueblo, you can take it to either one, because whichever one's closer, but, uh, but for the most part, we've got the, what we call Kaibo Central, up on the, uh, the far north side of the bowl, where all the Kaibos are lined up, that's our fourth dump site. Okay, so we've got the, the, uh, truck stop, the, fork above, the forks in the roads by Sioux, the horse pasture, and Kaibo Central in the bowl. You can take your garbage to any of those four dump sites. Do not put your garbage out before 7 p.m. So sometime between 7 p.m. and 7.30 p.m., get that garbage there. The problem with putting it out earlier is if you set it out earlier, it has all day long to sit out in the sun and bake and animals tear it open, and then it's a huge mess for us to have to clean it. Okay? So don't, don't take it there before 7 and don't take it there after 7.30. All right. Uh, let's see, moving on. Wildlife. We are the Boy Scouts and we need to respect the wildlife in camp. Okay? Um, there are skunks, regardless of how clean you keep your campsite, skunks will venture into your campsite this year. They're acclimated to the Boy Scout camp and they'll walk right up to your feet and as long as you don't kick them or yell at them, they're not even going to spray you. Okay? They'll walk right around your feet, hardly pay attention that you're even there. And even if your campsite is completely spotless and you don't have any food that they can smell, there were troops in there last week that they probably could smell, so they're going to come back. And they'll wander around, and if they can't find anything, they'll leave. Um, but they will be in camp. You need to tell the boys not to throw rocks at the skunks, not to throw rocks at the squirrels, or the raccoons, or the deer. Okay, we need to respect these wildlife. Okay. Um, also with trees, there are a lot of trees in camp. I remember when I was a Boy Scout, we would take our axe and we'd go chop down all the trees we could find. Please don't chop down our trees. We're trying to keep them there. Um, uh, respect of others. While you're here at Maple Dell this week, your campsite is your home. So please have respect for the other troops. Do not walk through other people's campsites. Okay? Yeah. What about carving your name into trees? Do not carve your name into trees. Okay? If that, if when you carve your name into trees, that actually damages the tree. And if you, if someone happened to do it all the way around the tree, the tree would die. Okay, so when you see these trees with carvings all over them, that, that tree is dying very slowly. Okay, um, so do not carve your name in, tri in trees either. Um, but respecting others, stay out of other people's campsites. Do not cut through their campsites just because it's a quicker way to get to where you're going. Um, hold on, it's really hot in here.
And I can yell loudly, so I'll go ahead and turn that on for us. Um, we need to not cut through people's campsites. Okay, respect their space and you know, be, just be courteous to them. Uh, you also need to not cut trails. Okay? The only trails we want you to walk on are the main road, cardiac trail, which is the one that goes up behind the rifle range, and the trail that goes directly in and out of your campsite. Okay? There are a lot of trails that come down the back side of this mountain from, for instance, campsites like Petit Neat and Osage, um, and all of the dog pound. They have all these trails that come down this side of the mountain, okay? And most of those, number one, end up cutting through a campsite, okay? And if you're cutting through people's campsites, we've already talked about how that's uh, disrespectful and uncourteous. But they also, the more trails we have, the more erosion is gonna happen, okay? That whole mountain used to be laced with a spider work of tra or a spider net, something, whatever, of trails, spider web, the web's the best thing I'm looking for, okay? Trails that came down that side of the mountain, okay? We've been trying to close those trails off because if those trails are still there, we're gonna get a huge rainstorm someday, and the mountain will be here, and we will have no lake and no Clyde Lodge, because that whole mountain will just go thump. okay? So we cannot cut trails, okay? Um, so talk to your boys about it, and tell them they need to be using the main road, the cardiac trail, and the trails directly in and out of your campsite. Those are the only acceptable trails, okay? Um, let's see, we talked about visitors. Tyler can talk about that. Fishing. This is our lake. You can't miss it. It's the center of camp, sort of. Um, but when you're fishing, um, you can't really see them from where you're sitting here, but there's two red buoys on sort of like three quarters of the way to the south end of the lake. Uh, those two red buoys mark between the fishing area and the activity area. The southern end, the shallow end, more towards nature, okay, the south end, the south beyond the buoys, that's for fishing. This northern end is the activity area for the boating, okay? We can't have any fishing on this side, and we can't have any boating on that side. Um, so make sure you tell all your boys this. Even though, like right now, even though the boating area is closed, we can't have any fishing in that side of the lake, because inevitably they'll lose a fish hook and we'll end up with a canoe or with a fish hook in his toe, okay? So we can only fish on that southern side. Now, if you want to fish, um, this is a private lake, so you need to buy one of our one of our fishing licenses. Having a state fishing license um, does not meet our requirements. You have to buy one of our private fishing licenses. They cost five dollars. They're available in the trading post, and they're good for five trout. Okay, we also have goldfish in our lake. You can catch as many goldfish as you want. Okay, but the, the fishing license is good for five trout. Now you can buy as many fishing licenses as you want. So if you buy, if you take your five trout and you've already caught five trout and you want to go buy another one, you can go do that. Okay, that's okay. Um, now, if you happen to do catch a goldfish, though, uh, we would like, we would ask you to please take the goldfish and take it down to the dumpsters and throw it away. We don't want the goldfish in our lake, so please do not release the goldfish back into the lake. Um, please just take it to the dumpster. Uh, in the past, they used to have where you caught a goldfish, you could get like a free drink in the trading post. We stopped doing that because everyone would come into the trading post with these handfuls of dead goldfish and say, I want my drinks. And we can't have any kind of animals, alive or dead, in the trading post due to health and safety reasons. So just please take it to the dumpster, throw it away. Um, just as a service to us, please. Um, but with the trout, you know, you can catch and release, you can catch and cook it. Whatever you want to do, it's a trap. It's good eating. Okay. Um, family night. Friday night is family night here at Camp Maple Hill. Um, we have we will have our closing flag ceremony at 8:15, and our closing campfire immediately after that. It's a good night to invite the boys' parents up. Um, if your troop wants to have you know wants to have them for dinner or for a special activity, whatever, or if you just want to have them come to the campfire, it doesn't matter. Um, but on Friday night for that family night, that's the exception to the rule of everybody has to check in because we'll have so many people here that we just can't physically check them all in. So they can just go find you guys, you know, enjoy the activities. Um, if they want to go just straight to the amphitheater to get a good seat um, for Friday night, that is fine. Um, but our closing show will be in that amphitheater, so when they come up, you can let them know that's where the show will be. Um, all right. It's a uh, 
flag ceremony is at 8.15, and the program will be just immediately after that. Uh, let's see, ooh, the next one, radios. Okay, this is an important one. Uh, at, here at camp, our staff uses the, the two-way FRS uh, family radio service walkie-talkies. Okay, um, write this down. Our medical services are on two, channel two, sub-channel zero. Our program areas, like all the merit badge areas, are on four zero, channel four, sub-channel zero. And the commissioners and management are on six zero. Uh, merit badge was four zero. So medical two zero, uh, merit badge four zero, and commissioner six zero. Okay, now scouts, senior patrol leaders, you and your scouts never at any time are allowed to have one of these. Okay, you cannot use these. Adult leaders, you guys are allowed to use these, but you need to stay off of those channels. We would ask that you stay on channel eight or above, please. Okay. Um, if you need to get a hold of us for an emergency or something, you can switch down to our channels, get a hold of us, we can get it taken care of, and then you can go back to your channel, okay? But only the adults are allowed to use these. We do that for several reasons. Number one, because people are always calling in fake emergencies, okay? When we let scouts have radios, next thing you know, they'll call down, yeah, there's somebody with, having a heart attack on, uh, on cardiac trail. So Fawn goes running up there to try to find this guy, there's nobody there, okay? Five minutes later, oh, there's somebody with a broken arm in the horse pasture. Fawn goes running over there, there's nobody there. Okay? Um, now, believe it or not, leaders, two years ago, we actually had a scoutmaster do the same thing. Okay? So, this is a privilege. If we have leaders doing this, this privilege might get taken away, but hopefully we don't. Let's get one thing clear, though. Calling in an emergency over the radio is a federal offense. Okay? It's no different than calling 911 with a fake emergency, okay? So, that is completely illegal, and it's completely, it's just wrong. So, just don't do it. Um, next thing is cell phones. Youth, you guys are not allowed to use cell phones anytime while you're here, okay? Adult leaders, we know you guys have business to manage and things like that, so you can use your cell phones. The best places for reception, it all depends on your service, some services work really well in the parking lot. Some work really well at the bell. Uh, yeah, the, the best place, regardless of service, is usually the Lock Carrow Ridge Amphitheater, which is just above the coat course, above the horse pasture. It's where we're going to be tonight for a uh, campfire program, so you'll see where that is. You can see all of Utah Valley from there, so you can usually get just about any service pretty well from there. But that's the best place, so if you're looking for service, Try out some places, but I recommend Walk Care if you don't mind the walk up there. It's not that far, and it's worth it for the best service. Um, mountain bikes and ATVs. Uh, mountain bikes and ATVs are not allowed at camp at any time for any reason. So if you happen to have brought your, a mountain bike with you, you need to take it down, lock it in your truck, lock it in the trailer, whatever you need to do, but we cannot have it in camp. Same thing with ATVs. And the last thing. You guys will be happy to know this is the last policy and procedure. Um, water conservation. Uh, who was here two years ago? A few of you. You may remember two years ago, every day at about noon, one o'clock, somewhere in there, we would run out of water and there would be no water left in camp. Okay? That's because our springs were flowing at the, at the rate of about six gallons of water per minute. Okay? Last year, at the beginning of the summer, we had a company come up and they completely redeveloped our whole spring area. And we now have some, I don't know what it is now, something like 85 gallons a minute going into our springs. Okay. The problem though is our tank, our water tank, is still the same size as it was two years ago. So the tank is only so big. Okay. So we occasionally still run out of water. Okay. Utah is still in a drought and so we ask you to conserve water. Um, the best thing to do is you get a couple of those uh, 5, 10, 15 gallon water coolers, whatever they are. Um, keep a couple of those full in your campsite at all times. Okay, that way if we should happen to run out of water, you have some water available for cooking and washing hands and drinking. Um, but it doesn't happen that often. Um, but keep in mind that you still need to conserve the water. So please don't take your hose just to wash down your pavilion and your tables every day. 
or to keep the dirt down in your campsite by spraying the water. Okay, that's an unacceptable use of water. We need to conserve our water, so please, you know, use it for what you need to use, but don't waste your water in any way. All right. Let's see. What does Rob want to do now? Let's see what we got. All right. Ship chuck, big hat. Yeah. Sometime in the next, hold on, sometime in the next 24 hours, you're going to hear a siren go off. That is our emergency alarm. Uh, if you ever hear the siren go off, we need to stop what we're doing and as quickly and safely as possible. Assemble in the main amphitheater, which is right across the lake. We will be doing a drill sometime, either tonight or tomorrow morning. Just letting you know. Uh, give you a heads up. So when we have that, we'll talk a little bit more about it with the scouts. So if you have any questions about that, talk to your commissioner about it. They'll help you out. Okay. We are actually going to split the group now. If you guys want to go and get your stuff ready to go. Uh, senior patrol leaders, raise your hand. All right. You guys get to go outside and enjoy the nice mountain fresh air. Our commissioners, these are the guys that work with the senior patrol leaders. Uh, they are going to go take the senior patrol leaders over to our main amphitheater or the chapel and they're going to talk about the awards, inspections, uh, what's expected of the senior patrol leaders, everything like that. So, senior patrol leaders, go ahead and follow the commissioners out the front door right over there. While the uh, senior patrol leaders are going, Area directors, there are rosters in there for you guys to copy the masters. So I need to have you go do that really quick before we break off this meeting. So, except for your area. Okay. The check already talked about fires, yeah. Okay. Uh, we are still in a drought. Uh, usually it is this week that the Forest Service imposes the restriction on Forest Service land. We've actually been in a no burn for the whole summer. Uh, hopefully you guys were all aware of that. So just plan on having no fires at all this week. However, it's okay to use charcoal, uh, things like that. You can use a controlled source of flame, like if you have one of those propane fires, those are okay. Uh, it just has to be something that comes from a controlled source of fuel. Uh, however, if the Forest Service this week, which in years past it is usually this week, imposes the fire restriction, it for some reason this canyon, the fire restriction on charcoal gets put into place. And once they do that, we can no longer allow charcoal at camp. The Forest Service does come up here and inspect, and they will write tickets. They've done it before. Uh, so just letting you know. However, we've been, it's been a really wet summer already. It has rained every week that we've been here, which is a good sign because the grass is still green. Uh, the temperature has been about 10 degrees cooler than normal this summer, which is great. Uh, there is a chance of rain today and tomorrow, and then throughout the rest of the week it's supposed to clear up. At least that's, of course I'm in the mountains up here and don't get KSL. Has anybody heard differently? Or an updated weather report? Okay. We'll try and update you guys. I heard it's supposed to snow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Why, well, where are you from? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Okay, I'm going to talk really fast about the schedule for today and the general schedule for camp. Uh, two quick things. Every morning at 9.30 a.m. for the Scoutmasters, you guys, we're going to have Scoutmaster Roundtable. It will be the chapel, which is you just go up the road. There's a little silver gate. Uh, there's a little amphitheater right there. It's called the chapel. If you cannot make it, Scoutmaster, please send somebody in your place because we talk about some important things that are going on in camp, the, the schedule, uh, any problems that are going on. 9.30 in the morning. Yeah, right after flag ceremony, right after the program areas. Senior patrol leaders will have a meeting starting today, every day, at 5.30 p.m. Uh, they're actually, uh, they took the senior patrol leaders over to talk about what they were going to talk about tonight, so that tonight's meeting is not as long, because we would rather have them go and go back for dinner and things like that. So uh, make sure you remind your senior patrol leader about the meeting at 5.30. So. And that's at the same place, the chapel. All right. One thing before I forget, let me mention this. 
we're going to have our, our campfire program tonight. One of the things that we're doing new this year is we're actually going to have an honor trail for the senior patrol leaders right after the campfire program tonight. And what this is, is it's an honor trail where we teach them about uh, leadership skills, being, you know, what is a senior patrol leader, what are their responsibilities for this, uh, this week, and we just teach them different things. And uh, at the end of it, we actually will make them an honorary staff member for the week. So when we have the senior patrol leader stay after the campfire program, that is what we're doing. The troop friends will escort the senior patrol leader back to the campsite as soon as we're done. So it should only take about a half an hour or so. It's a great experience. The senior patrol leaders have had a great time doing it. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the uh, senior patrol leaders to feel, uh, feel like they're more involved, feel like they're more involved with the staff. Uh, we learn their names, different things like that. So it's a great way to start off the week. It's a great connection. So, all right. Today at 2.30, we will have Camp White Flag Ceremony at Mount Man Meadow, which is the big white flag poles right behind the trading post. Uh, as soon as we're done with the opening flag ceremony, the program areas will open today at 3 o'clock, and they go till 6 o'clock. Now, some of the merit badges you can start today. Some of the merit badges don't start till tomorrow morning. Uh, look at the schedule. There are a couple of merit badges that you have to start today in order to get them this week. And Mr. R will talk about those when he does his presentation. Uh, at 6 o'clock, when we close the program areas down, uh, we'll, have, we'll go to dinner. Uh, dinner's until uh, we have our flag ceremony at 8.15 tonight. Uh, the evening flag ceremony tonight will be at uh, the horse pasture. And if you don't know where the horse pasture is, just ask your commissioner or any of the staff. It is on the top side of camp just past the swimming pool. You, Zuni, Kiowa, Paiute, all those campsites are right there. We're gonna go do our uh, opening campfire tonight at Wakara Ridge, which is the amphitheater up on the top side of camp. It's awesome. You can see all of the uh, valley, the city lights, the sunset. Uh, it's a beautiful view. Now, if it does rain tonight, we will try to do the campfire the best we can. If there's thunder and lightning, we will probably not do the campfire tonight, okay? We actually did not do our Friday night campfire last week because of thunder and lightning, which has never happened in the... Now, don't anybody knock on wood on this. <laughs> so, uh, we will let you know. Just plan on still having flag ceremony, and then we'll just go from there. Uh, weather permitting, we'll go up and have our campfire program, so... Question? Yes? Backing up one of the most important things you said about dinner. Yes. Uh, where are the boys on the commissary pick up your food? Okay. Tyler is going to talk about commissary here shortly, and so, and we have a little handout for you too that has, yes. Is it horse pasture, horse pasture and the care rig? The ceremony at the care rig? Yeah. Not the horse pasture. Well, we'll have flag ceremony at the horse pasture, and then we'll just walk together as a group up there. Eight fifteen. So, okay. Now tomorrow, the way the merit badge program goes is it's like this: we do merit badges from nine to noon and then from two to six. From nine to noon, we do classes. Uh, yeah, I know, I'm gonna get, get to that, okay. Nine to noon and then two to six. Now you'll notice on your schedule, the last hour, the five to six p.m. Uh, is actually reserved for other things. We call it free time. It's for scouts to experience other things at camp besides merit badges. Uh, all the program areas are open. They all have activities and games going on. Uh, sometimes, you know, scouts will be working on merit badges all day long and they haven't had the opportunity to go to the rifle range yet and do some shooting or the lakefront or the swimming pool. It's a great time for them just, just to go and relax and have fun. So that's from 5 to 6 every night starting today. Now, you'll notice that all of the merit badges are broken down into sessions. I'll just grab one of these here and let me find an easy one. What page do you want? Uh, just Let's do uh, Scout Craft, since Scout Craft is so cool. <laughs> what, what page is that? It's on 39 in mine. It's just in the schedule part, 39. You'll notice that all the merit badges are broken down into sessions. Like, for instance, Pioneering says three sessions plus project time. What that means is a scout will need to go to session one, session two, and session three. Uh, they can go any time that Pioneering is taught. Uh, and this is for all the merit badges. I'm just using Pioneering as an example. Uh, pioneering is taught from 3 
to 350 today. So the first class is at 3 o'clock. Now let's say that uh, tomorrow your troop is going to go to the COPE course at 3 o'clock on Tuesday. And that's when your scout's supposed to be going to pioneering. Well, all he has to do is go to pioneering 2 at another time. All he has to do is just make sure that he attends all the sessions for that class. It doesn't have to be that hour. It's very flexible. You guys can just make your schedule. Uh, just make sure you look at it to double check and make sure that that class is taught at that time. Our most popular merit badges are taught every hour. Some of the merit badges that are not as popular are taught every other hour or one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Just make sure you double check. Uh, if you're not sure, feel free to talk to the area directors and they will help you guys out and answer any questions. Uh, so they don't have to go to pioneering every day at 3 o'clock. They can mix it up and match it up. Uh, we just tried to do that to make it a little bit easier for you guys because I know we have outpost hikes going on. We've got uh, the COPE course going on, so we want to make sure we're flexible for you guys. Question? Some of them, for example, uh, I've got a few boys going to astronomy, but we're doing the COPE course this afternoon, and there is no other opportunity to go to astronomy one. The astronomy yeah. one is taught at 9 and 10 in the morning as well tomorrow. It is, but that's when they're doing canoeing and rowing. So, yeah, okay, then we bump canoeing and rowing, then we bump canoeing and rowing. Yeah. So, is it, is it possible to go during the makeup time? I know some say makeup time. I don't teach a whole class of makeup time. Talk to Mr. R about it afterwards. He's, one of the problems we have is some of the badges you have to start today. Astronomy is one of those. So, uh, yeah, go talk to Mr. R after this, see what you guys can work out. Uh, question. On the wilderness one, if it doesn't show one, two, or three, so it doesn't matter. Wilderness survival? Yes, wilderness survival. Uh, talk to me about it afterwards, because if it's not in there, then it's a typo. Oh, that's a one, two, and three, right? It's a one, two, three, and seven. Okay. That's a typo. Uh, wilderness survival is a three part. Just talk to Ben. Just plan on, like if it's taught today, you know, it's a one, two, three. So, okay. We are going to have some of our area directors come up really quick so they can talk to you guys. We'll start with our trading post. Come on up, Debbie. Woo! Trading post. Okay, we're going to start this. If you did not get a cash card regulation disclosure today, make sure there's at least one in your troop. I've also given them to the senior patrol leaders. Make sure that it stays with your paperwork. If you're a fairly local troop and you have leaders coming in and out all week, make sure that every leader that comes in and out sees this because the leaders that are here Friday afternoon will be responsible for the contents of this piece of paper. Okay? Did I say that nicely enough? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then this is your commissary and trading post, so you'll need this when Tyler comes up in a minute. Okay. On the trading post part of, of the big one, it just says what we have in there, what our hours are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, trading post is pretty straightforward. The kids come in there, they buy what they need. We have all of your merit badge supplies in there. There are some merit badges now that we've gone to a little coupon type ticket in addition to the rifle range, um, archery, and the art merit badge, just, it's just a little coupon. They come in and they pay for it, and they get all their supplies up there, okay? Everything else, um, if you'd encourage your boys just to look around when they come up, when they come in, all of your merit badge supplies are on the far left back wall, and the explanation of what they need for every merit badge and the prices is there as well if they just look, okay? So, merit badge supplies, that's where you get your ice. If you're on the commissary, you get as much ice as is on your ice card. Um, if you need to buy additional bags, as long as the ice supply holds out, you may buy additional bags. If you're not on the commissary plan, you may buy bags of ice at $1 a bag, as long as our supply is holding. The hotter it gets for longer periods of time, our ice supply may not last. But so far, we've been good with it. Um, there's a, that's also where the kids get their junk food. Last week I did limit the amount of candy any one scout could buy at any one time. The scouts got mad at me, but you guys probably appreciate it. So I don't think a scout needs $7 worth of 10 cent candy. I just I don't think they do. Anyway, so um, that's what we do in there. The other thing we do is fishing licenses. I think Chuck talked about needing a fishing license. Fishing licenses are non-refundable. Um, rifle tickets are non-refundable, so talk to your boys about planning how much they're going to need. The other thing in the trading post that is not refundable are the knives. 
They must have a totem chip. They must have a totem chip to look at, buy, use, or carry a knife at Camp Mapledale. So I won't even open the cabinet for them without a totem chip. We do sell the totem chips. We sell them to adults only, three for a quarter. So if your kids came up without their totem chips, come get some totem chips. Fill them out. Make sure they know all the safety rules, because I will ask them a safety rule or two when they buy their knives. Um, ice, fishing licenses. Um, if you are on the commissary and you need ice, please pay attention to our hours. We have extended so that we're open through the lunch hour, but we close at 6 o'clock for the night because we've been open straight through. So we close at 6, and we need to close at 6 if we're going to get any dinner since we staggered our lunch. So if you come in between 12 and 12.30 or 12.45, it may be sparse in there as far as um, people, but we do have three cash registers now. You can buy everything at every register. Rifle tickets, arrow kits, everything at every register. So, um, And this is your little trading post thing. If you didn't get one, please read it over, and I'm not going to take time to talk about it today, but please read it over, and I will come to Scoutmaster meeting at 9.30 in the morning, and I will answer any of your questions about the... We had to put this in this year because we had a lot of questions. Is that a nice way to put it, last year? Any questions about anything in the trading post? Should you have to participate in this? Or can no, you do not. It's just a little safety net. If a kid loses a $20 bill, somebody will bring it in to us, hopefully, but we don't have any way of knowing who's is who's. If they lose this, we record their number, their campsite, their name, their troop, you know. Um, and then when they come in and they say, you know, I'm so-and-so from 244, we look up their cash card number, we post it on all the cash registers, and we don't allow anybody else to use it. Same as if you reported a lost credit card. So it's a safety net, but it needs to be used wisely, and they need to know that they need to make an attempt to look for it, but then report it as soon as possible. If they come in and say, I lost my cash card three days ago, we've not stopped payment on that. So this just outlines your responsibility, their responsibilities and our responsibilities. Any other questions about the training post? Yeah. Oh. No? Oh, sorry. He's coming. Yeah. He's coming next. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing while he's coming up. If we do, I do have some stuff that I keep in the back, like extra plates and forks and spoons. And, so if you don't see something you want, ask me. And I'll say, yes, I have it, or they're going to get it for me, or whatever it is, okay? All right. My name's Tyler. I'm the commissary director. And uh, most of the stuff you need to know is on your paper there. Uh, the pickup and, well, the drop-off times are at 11.30 and 5.30. And at 5.30, we drop off both your dinner and your breakfast. So we'll come in the same bin. Uh, we have three drop-off points. Uh, the first one is at the handicraft area, the truck stop, and the second one is in the horse pasture, and the third one is at the, the bull, or Kaibo Central, is, is where the last one is. And we'll come up and we'll drop off your bins, they'll have your food in it, and if you get the bins back um, quickly, uh, and drop them off there, uh, when I head back down I'll pick them up for you, and so you won't have to carry them down to the, the commissary. But if you miss that, uh, they'll have to bring the bins back down to the commissary so we can fill it for your next meal. Um, if you're not on the commissary plan, uh, we can sell items to you if you're, you're missing something uh, at cost. So if you need like a bottle of ketchup or, or something like that, uh, that can be taken care of. Um, that should be about everything. Does anyone have any questions? Some type of commissary plan card to get ice? Yeah. Um, I don't have any of those. Uh, I should be given to you uh, at the uh, Scoutmaster meetings at the round table. Yeah. They should give you one. But I don't have any of those, those ice cards. That's something that Rob or James or Greg will take care of. How are those for extra meals without people coming in and Okay. Uh, on extra meals, what I'd like to have you do is write it down on a piece of paper and then come and talk to me and, and, and give me that piece of paper and then I'll, I'll take care of that for you. Uh, you can pay to me or you, you can pay to James who is the, the financial director. Are we assigned to either pick up and drop off lunch or we pick up and drop off any one of these points? Um, there are assigned uh, but you can pick up from 
you know, if we're in an area and you want to carry it, we'll drop off the closest to your campsite. But if you are in another area where we're dropping off and you want your bin, I mean, it's not a problem. We'll give it to you if you want to carry it that far. Um, but know which drop off site we're assigned to now. Um, come talk to him right afterwards. You can talk to me afterwards, I guess. We're going to cut it right there. All right. If you have any questions about commissary, go talk to him right afterwards. Thank you, Tyler. Officer, the medical office, for those that have not seen, is right across the road from the trading post. There's a building over there. We are on the north end of that building. Um, just make note of that. Um, when, if you come to the medical office or your scouts come to the medical office, um, have them read the sign on the door. A lot of times I'm just in the white tent next to the medical office, and a lot of scouts will walk up. I don't know if they don't read the sign or whatever, they walk away and I'm just right there. So make sure that they pay attention and don't walk away thinking I'm not there. Um, make sure that your boys are drinking a lot of water. Our biggest problem at camp has been dehydration from kids not drinking enough water. They get headaches, they get upset stomachs, they get different things. If you just have them drinking water, you'll cut down on a lot of the sickness in your camp. Um, Remember that safety is your responsibility. If you see a scout doing something unsafe, make sure you stop them. Have your kids keep their feet on the ground, and you'll cover a lot of things right there. <laughs> don't have them climbing, don't let them climb flagpoles, don't let them climb trees. No rope swings or zip lines in your campsites, okay? Um, and have them use walking feet. We sent three scouts to the hospital last week for running down trails, and that is a common thing. Have them walk. And if you see scouts running down the trails, just remind them to walk in camp. Um, and Chuck already mentioned, everybody in camp needs to have a medical form. You can turn those in at the medical office with me. And that's all I have. Is Lynn Shepherd here? Is that your group? I should have known. That's fine. <laughs> All right, Mr. R, you can go oh, first oh, today. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, oh, okay. Make it go wider. Make it go wider on the camera. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Mr. R, the Ecology Conservation Director, and we are glad to have you here at camp. If you come to our area, which is directly across the lake here, you'll find, number one, we are five degrees cooler than any other place in camp, so if scoutmasters want to enjoy that cool area, you're welcome to come just visit with us. Plus, we suggest that boys who are taking environmental science or some of the merit badges take a little time. It's amazing if you show up, they tend to be a little bit more responsive and get things done. Every merit badge taught in our area will receive a passport. A passport is a 4 by 5 booklet that they take and they keep track of their reports, they get track of the data they may record, they mark down the answers to questions for the merit badge. I assume, if they haven't read anything in this book, I assume they haven't listened, which is about 90% correct. So, your responsibility as a scoutmaster is when he comes back on Tuesday night, you say, let me look at your passport. Then you start going through it and says, boy, I noticed you didn't do anything here. Says, oh yeah, we talked about that. Then have you sit down and start filling it out. Come Wednesday night and Thursday, they should have them all filled out completely. If they don't, then you know how they're doing in class. Just because they attend class doesn't mean they're going to pass the merit badge. Astronomy, one of the funnest in camp, uh, will start tonight with session A, which is the night classes. We have A, B, and C, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 10 o'clock. They meet in the upper part of the bowl. The kids will ask where that's at. You can ask the commissioners. They'll explain where the bowl is. The day classes, there's two sessions, are taught in the lower section down here. So there are five sections plus a small test which I know is a four-letter word, but we actually do a test individual on each boy to see if they understand the stars and constellations. Very fun merit badge. You are invited to attend. I'll average from 125 to 150 people sitting on the hill up there just coming to enjoy the stories and learn about the sky and that. If it's cloudy, we will still teach it. If it's lightly drizzling, I'll probably still be up there. If it's a heavy rain, which it will not be, don't worry, everything will be fine. Okay, so they must start today or tomorrow with session one. They must start tonight 
with session A, which is the night time. Environmental science, that can be started today or tomorrow. There's three classes. We do not accept ecology conservation bottles made here at camp. If they made their ecosystem bottle at home and brought it here, then we can take the report they've done. If they want to make one here, I will not accept it because they always fail. And I think that's being rather hypocritical if we say make it a camp, you'll get it done, you'll pass the requirement, yet we know it's going to fail. I do not allow kids to fail on purpose. Okay, we have forestry, fishing, geology. Geology goes on hikes. They actually put on goggles, actually take hammers and break rocks open and learn. We actually have a person that's majoring in geology that will be teaching that class. We have mammal study, where they actually put out bait tracking pits to try to actually get footprints of the animals we have here in camp, and then they can make casts of what they want to. Soil and water conservation, weather, we have a number of classes. Weather must be started today or tomorrow morning if they're going to accomplish weather here at camp. Okay, one thing, these merit badge passports are valuable. They're free to the kid for the first one. They're 25 cents for each one thereafter. Have them put a plastic baggie in their pocket if they're going to go swimming or if they're going to go canoeing. I read through five or six wet ones every single week. Or well, the biggest excuse is I lost it while I was rowing. My answer is to fill out a new one. Okay, so if he's done all of his report and done all the work and he loses it, he hasn't gone to the counselor yet to report, so it's the same at home. If he loses stuff before he gets to the counselor, the counselor never saw the information. Okay, I'll work with any of the best we can. Uh, we work around COPE and everything else the best we can, but there may be extenuating circumstances. But they should be through with all their merit badges by Thursday morning and bringing their passports back. They must, must, repeat the word with me, must bring back their passports to me on Thursday afternoon or to light as Friday morning. Otherwise, they will not pass the class. Just because they attend it does not mean they pass. Sarah is very nice. Be nice to her. This is Sarah over here. This is the skunk. last year being assistant co director. Um, Scout Craft is located by Handicraft. It's the big metal pavilion. It's in between Handicraft and Archery. There's a bunch of trees there. First of all, we'd ask people not to cross the ropes we put up there. It's, we're trying to let the grass grow back there, so also that won't come down. Um, at Scout Craft, we teach wilderness survival, orienteering, pioneering, emergency preparedness, and Indian lore. Um, First of all, with orienteering and pioneering, they are four-day classes. If they miss one day, they will not be able to get the merit badge. They need to be there each day. Um, even though uh, that supposedly there's makeup time, those times we're doing pioneering projects and orienteering courses. And uh, during, during free time, we're doing games. So they will not really be able to make up that time unless some instructor is free. Um, with wilderness survival, um, there is an overnighter that they need to go to on Thursday nights where they need to build a natural shelter. I stress natural shelter. And we will be meeting at 7 o'clock at Scoutcraft to look at their packs, to check their uh, survival kits. And then we're going to head up and go to Mountain Man Paradise that is not Rendezvous Ridge. I, is somebody going to talk about Rendezvous Ridge later on? Okay. I'll let them talk about that. It's only about a half mile away. It's even easy for the younger scouts to go. Everybody's invited to that, by the way, Scoutmasters and all. Um, if they go to that, they will need, they need to eat dinner before that, and they will miss the Iron Man and the uh, Troop Talent Campfire. Um, at the Wilder Survival, it's a three-day merit badge, so you guys know. Orienteering courses. If you guys see these stakes laying around, they're wooden stakes about that tall. You should get some flag in us, some writing. Please don't let Scutch touch those. Some of them are near campsites because, you know, we can't just go on the roads all over the place, so it would be pretty predictable. Um, and that's a 40 merit badge. With emergency preparedness, it is a required merit badge, but also one of the requirements is to earn the first aid merit badge. Now, if your scouts have not earned the first aid merit badge, they can still take the class, but they will uh, get a partial on it, which is not a bad thing. They just have to make sure they finish first aid some other time, then they'll get both merit badges at the same time. You can, if you guys, if they're concurrently enrolled, which means that they're in both classes here, once they finish first aid, we need a uh, note from the scout master saying that they completed that. 
Well, they can come talk to us in person. For pioneering, it's four days. One thing we would ask is to not borrow our polls unless you talk personally with me. Um, that we don't have a lot of them, and we'd love to have some donated too. Um, for the Wakair Arrow, one of the requirements is to build a significant pioneering project. Um, lots of people coming to me for ideas. We, we would like you guys, as you're, if you guys are going for the Wakair Arrow, to come up with your own ideas of what you would like to do. Then come tell us what you want to do. If you really need help, we can give you a few ideas, but we'd prefer that you had your own ideas. Then come tell me what you're doing so we know what you're doing, so we can give you the materials. Um, down in our areas, we welcome scout masters to help out who have experience in the different areas. Um, during the free time, we're playing games like Indian games, um, fire building, some knot tying, things like that. So please come. And that's all. My name's Dick. I'm the shooting sports director. Um, I run the rifle range. It's just right up here on the hill. We teach the rifle shooting merit badge just right by the lake in the trees. You'll see a white pavilion. That's where the merit badge is taught. Up at the rifle range, all we do all week is just free shooting. So when your scouts have finished, well, hopefully before they finish, a long time before they finish, the, the merit badge part, they go up and do the shooting requirements when they have some free time. We don't do any shooting in class. It's just free shooting at the rifle range all week long. It costs 25 cents for 10 bullets. You can buy a ticket at the trading post, and that's they bring that up, that's worth 10 bullets. Um, there's something else really important that I can't think of right now. But while I think of that, I'll tell you about the Frontiersman program. Um, this is a mountain man program. This is um, for scouts that have some free time they don't know what to do with. It's a really fun program. They learn a lot of wilderness skills, um, survival skills. We teach it at, is it 10 a.m., Rob? Teach the Frontiersman program at 10 a.m. There's two teepees right here by the lake. That's where that is taught. And then Thursday night we go on a rendezvous. It's about a mile and a half, half up this mountain behind camp. And we stay overnight there. And it's a lot of fun. We shoot black powder rifles and we throw tomahawks. And if your boys want to do that, instead of going on the wilderness survival camp out that Ben was talking about, they can go on the rendezvous. We just have to, they just have to make sure to tell one of the staff members that they're doing it for wilderness survival. Also, at the two teepees by the lake is the outpost area. That's where all the outpost hikes leave from every day, which are at 2 o'clock. We have one tomorrow, one on Wednesday, and one on Thursday. They'll leave at 2 o'clock. And they will talk about which, or which at the Scoutmaster meeting every morning. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say about the rifle range is um, just make sure your scouts, if they're trying to qualify for the merit badge, start early. Don't wait till Friday. All right, thank you. My name is Mike. I'm the archery director this year. Uh, of course, I teach archery. Pretty simple. Um, the, she talked about the little blue tags. You will buy them at the uh, training post. They are for the archery kit, which is required for the archery merit badge. Uh, they cost two dollars, not five, like it says in your staff guide or your uh, leader's guide. They cost two dollars. You purchase them there, then they'll bring the tag on Wednesday. Make sure they have it with them on Wednesday. They'll bring it up to me, and I will hand them their kits, and we'll make the arrows that day. I teach two different classes. One goes from 9 a.m. to 11. They are two-hour classes. Per session. The other one goes from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So please make sure that you don't have any other merit badges scheduled between those times if they plan on coming to archery. Other than that, uh, free time is from 11 to noon and from 4 to 6. And we do play games at night. So if you guys want to feel free during free time at 5 and 6, we do play games. So. Thanks, Mike. My name's Wave. I'm the first year camper director. Um, those of you who you know, read your leader's guide before, we're, we're known as the Baden Powell Brigade. What we do is it's a program for new scouts. And they, sign us, they sign them up with me and they stay with me during all the merit badge times. 
and we work on requirements for tenderfoot, second class, and first class. We'll also be getting the Indian Lore and Pioneering Merit Badges. Now, this is a program that's designed for scouts that are with me the whole week. The last few weeks I've had lots of scouts come up and want to do just a couple requirements, but that's not how it works. It's because I have each scout written down and we wrote, record all the requirements that they did. So you can't just bring your book to me because that's not how it works, which is really annoying when people try to come for just a couple requirements. So if you're going, to, if you're not, if you don't have them signed up for the program, then then you can't have them just come and do the requirements with me. We'll be going on the Red Lake hike, which is a five-mile hike on Wednesday morning. And so if you do have scouts signed up for that, then they need to tell me if they're on the commissary plan because we need to get sack lunches for them. It's from nine to you know into lunch. So you know what day was that? When, Wednesday morning. Okay. All right. <coughs> Thanks later. Questions, talk to the director afterwards, please. Come on up, challenge. More than, all the directors will be right here when we're done, so. Okay, I'm Shalyn Mendenhall. I am the political science director. I teach communications, citizenship in the world, and citizenship in the nation. Um, these merit badges are three day sessions, and we actually start both citizenships tonight. So, um, or, and you can start them tomorrow morning, but we do start a couple classes tonight, so be aware of that. Also, um, I'm located by the bell, so that's easy to find, and uh, make sure that they have a pen or pencil, and thanks for coming. My name is Jake, I'm the first aid director. I teach the first aid mayor back. <coughs> Um, a couple of things you need to know about the first aid merit badge is a, is a, uh, let's see, yeah, it's a four session class starting today. Make sure they come today if they are going to take the first aid merit badge because I really don't have time to, you know, teach them over. Um, so if, if they don't come today, then they're going to get a partial. Um, also, they do need to bring their own first aid kit from home. They need to have prepared it themselves. That is one of the requirements. Okay? If they don't, if they didn't bring that, then they will get a partial also. Okay? Um, it is a three-hour class. It takes the full three hours, except for today, which is only one hour. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I meet uh, by the training post. It's over in the shaded area on the other side of the training post. All right, come on up, Debbie. Debbie and Sandy. Yay. <coughs> okay, I'm Debbie. I'm the aquatics director, and this is Sandy, my assistant aquatics director. And just your mind, those we missed the swim checks this morning. You can do your swim checks every day of the week if you need to. We'll start today at 3 o'clock during free time. So you can do your swim checks all week long. Just make sure you have your medical forms turned in. So I will have that ready for you when you do your swim checks. We'll do class sign-ups today from 3 o'clock till 4.30 for swimming and life-saving. 3 o'clock to 4.30 today. First come, first serve, and we must start those tomorrow morning. If you don't start them tomorrow morning, you will not get a, you will not get the merit badge up for the partial. Makeup classes are on Wednesday afternoon from 3 to 4 o'clock. If you're involved in the cult course, that's a good time to do makeup classes on Wednesday afternoon. If there's a problem, come and talk with me. Our classes are in your guide, so you know what time we start. We have beginning swimming lessons 10 o'clock Monday through, or Tuesday through Thursday for beginning swimming. Um, I think that's all I have to say to you. Glad you're here and have a good week. Okay. Um, I'm Sandy Ferguson. I'm the lakefront director. Uh, we do teach rowing and canoeing. Uh, one of the major requirements is that to make sure that if you're going to sign your boy up or your boy signs up, he must be a swimmer. He cannot be a beginner. He cannot be a non-swimmer. When he does the swim check, he must be a swimmer. It's a requirement actually for the merit badge. Um, he can, he's got to be a swimmer by at least tomorrow. So if he was a beginner today, he could try again, but he's got to be a swimmer by tomorrow. I teach uh, 9, 10, 11, and 2 o'clock classes for both rowing and canoeing. Uh, one of our problems is, is that we have to limit because we only have so many canoes, so many row moats, and so many lifeguards. So I'm limiting, limiting each class to 25 scouts. Um, that does equal to 100 scouts for each class. 
Uh, what happens is at three times today, at three o'clock, there will be a table uh, by the lake that's going to be in the amphitheater. One of the lifeguards or myself will be sitting there. And your scout needs to come down and personally signs himself up. Because what happens most of the time is when the scoutmaster signed them up, one of them took like 12 spots and only five of the scouts actually end up showing. And I got a lot of scoutmasters mad at me. So um, if you need to, you can come down yourself if your scout has a class. But please, if you can, have them come down personally so they can sign up for their own classes. Um, yeah, 3 o'clock today uh, over there at the lake. Um, also for CPR is one of the requirements. There's three ways they can pass this off. Either in the past three months that you have done it with your troop, or they've done a powwow or something, um, you, need to, you need to write them a note and you need to give it to me. They need to have their first or last name, your troop number, and your campsite. And it would be highly appreciated if you put down if they're doing canoeing and rowing or both or so. Um, another way is if they're doing for life-saving or swimming, or if they're doing for first aid, uh, they'll, be rec they'll be doing it up there too. So uh, Jake or Debbie or one of the instructors will write them a note and they need to come down and give it to me. The other way is I'm teaching CPR twice a week. I'm teaching it Wednesday at remember, 3, which is here, and Friday at 10, which is here too. I'm teaching it both, and it will usually take about an hour because I only have so many scouts, and it takes about 25 minutes to explain and to get through all the scouts. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's it. Okay. Yes. I'm the handicraft director. We have wood carving, art, basketry, and leather work. Wood carving and art both take three sessions, so they do need to come to the class tomorrow or else they won't be able to learn all the material. Um, basketry, the requirements changed this year, so even though it says that it's one of the easiest merit badges of the camp, it is a little bit more difficult now, so uh, it takes more time. Um, for all four of the merit badges, you have the, the scouts have to come to a project time, which is every day except for Friday, between 3 and 5, they have to come during that time it take, and spend however long it takes them to finish up their projects. Um, and all of them also have projects that they need, to, things that they need to buy in the training post. The um, people in the training post know what that is and they can, hand, or they can ask up at Handicraft. For wood carving, one of the requirements is that they need to have a totem chip. They need to have a totem chip in order to carry a knife in camp to get the merit badge and also to work on their projects up at the Handicraft area. I'm Steve Miller, I'm the camp COPE director. COPE is the best thing at Camp Mapledell. And I tried to catch you all coming in this morning. Uh, some of you, most of you I had a chance to, and I do have a few openings still if you didn't get a chance for COPE time. It's a series of interactive games, trust activities, and problem-solving activities to divide and build teamwork. In so doing, we teach communication, decision-making skills, self-confidence, and problem-solving. And these are the natural byproducts of the activities we do. I personally believe it's more important and more valuable to your scout than any merit badge we keep in camp, with no offense towards anybody else here on our wonderful staff. I just know what it'll do for, for young people and, and their adult leaders in many cases. We have you come as a troop because, as I say, it's a, a team-building activity. If you did not get an opportunity to talk to me this morning or you needed to check with your boys and see when they have a merit badge, uh, I have a few openings. Nobody's taken 10 o'clock hour. Funny thing how that one worked out. So I do have openings at 10 o'clock and 11. Uh, we can handle somebody else. And... Um, those of you who took a 9 o'clock time tomorrow might want to just talk to me quick afterwards because I, we might, somebody might want to shift around. I might get you a little better time. Please, if you've made an appointment with us, don't stand us up. There are three of us up there ready to go, and sometimes you've taken a time and I turned somebody else away that wanted that time. If you come and tell me 15 minutes beforehand, there's nothing I can do about it. It's too late to get somebody else up there. But you know, if you let me know in advance, like the one nice gentleman did, then I can can make some shifts if we need to change. But I guess that's about it. Come, come join in with the boys and bring a camera. You'll get some of the, there are some real Kodak moments up there on the Kodak course. You, yes sir? Where is the pool? It's, you know where the pool is? Where? The pool? Yeah. Okay, you go up the pool and then around the curve up above the pool, you'll see a slide, there's a little fork in the road when you get around the curve, past those campsites. And it says Kodak course and you can't miss it. It's a muddy, rutty road. Once you get up and I'll show you the shortcut. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, Steve. Heather, you want to come up really quick? <laughs> Sorry, I should have had you go first, but... <laughs> um, I'm Heather. Uh, but after the meeting...
mean? I need to see the following scout masters. Uh, well, scout masters for the following troops. Uh, troop 692, 1211 and 1196. And I just need to meet with you in that office right through this door. Okay? Thank you. All right, thanks, Heather. James and Greg. Woo! Okay, I'm James Longers. I'm the camp director, also the assistant camp director. Or I'm the assistant camp director, also the business manager. I'm not the camp director. <laughs> I've checked in with most of you. There are a few of you that haven't checked in with me. I heard that four groups came in after I left. Greg and I had to go do some, run some errands real quick. So as I list off your unit, if you'll raise your hand so I can see that you're here. Also, afterward, just to so make sure we get the finances squared away and also make sure we get your tour permit signed, signed off. If I can see you right after the meeting over here in my office. Unit 205. Okay. 397. 615 from this East Bay Second Warp, not here. 665, 702, 888, and 1184. Okay, you guys will all come see me as soon as Greg's done with you. Don't forget, because usually after about five minutes you forget and you go off and off to try to track you down during the week. If you can come see me right afterward, I'll get you all checked in. You'll be set to go. Thanks. I know you're tired, ready to get out of here, but we just wanted to welcome you here to Maple Dale. My name's Greg Siebel, camp director, though I would like to give the job to James. Um, oh, I like the camera. And uh, so. Um, being the camp director, I uh, just want to let you know, convey to you that we have a great staff for you here this year. Um, over half of my staff is over 18 years old. They, uh, we have over four weeks um, this year, four weeks, um, no, three weeks um, experience, one week of staff week. But uh, we're doing really well. You, your week here um, is about one of the least amount of scouters here, so your boys will get a lot of personal attention. And if you have any problems at any time, come see James or I, or if it's on the program side, definitely see Rob. And uh, just to let you know, we are an accredited Boy Scout camp. The first week of camp, we had a visitation team come up. We passed with flying colors, and everything looks great going into the week. We just hope the rain stays away as long as possible, and I hope you guys have a good time. Thanks. Maribadge cards, uh, you run out of Maribadge cards, the commissioners, they all have Maribadge cards. We ask that you only take the amount that you need for that time. We're trying to try and, we want to try and keep the uh, waste down uh, on the Maribadge cards. Sometimes people will take like 50 and they only needed actually 10. Uh, we only have so many Maribadge cards to last us for the rest of the summer. So as soon as we break off, uh, if you have any questions for any of the area directors, they'll be here. Don't forget at 2.30, which is in about 35 minutes, we'll have camp-wide flag ceremony. Thank you very much for coming to an orientation meeting, and we'll see you guys later. Do